The reason I've done these is to show you of older systems, they may not be the most efficient, but it just indicates how sensitive or insensitive some of the orientation stuff is. So Napier University in Edinburgh, where we used to give a lot of the courses, has panels at the side of their library block here. They're almost vertical, um, tilted 75 degrees. They actually wanted to tilt them at slightly lower angle, but the planning authorities wouldn't let them do them quite that way. Uh, there was some story about the light would be reflected into the bus driver's eyes as they passed, which was nonsense because it was going the other way. But there you go. There's no planners here, are there? I can be rude about it. No. <laughs> no. I mean, they really, yeah, they didn't seem to understand the geometry. Uh, but the other thing is, this actually faced quite a long way east of south, uh, but it was the ideal building to use on that particular face rather than any of the other sites. So it's been operating a long time. Uh, it was put up as a demonstration project. It wasn't expected to be commercially uh, of great value at the time. And this is the sort of figure you get uh, about 70 to 75 kilowatt hours a square metre. Uh, the BP panels, not as efficient as today's panels, but still okay. And it would have taken a long time to pay back, but still energy payback. But just at that time, the panels were quite expensive, so it wasn't really a good cost benefit. Uh, quite a big area for the time, and they used four inverters as well, because at that time, again, inverters weren't so reliable, so they didn't want to be restricted to just one inverter taking the whole lot out and being a major cost. Uh, it feeds into a single phase in the building, because being a commercial building, in effect, it has a three-phase supply. Do people understand three-phase and single-phase? Yes? No, it's all right. I'll explain it. Yeah, I usually do explain it. If everybody knows, I won't. Um, if we take um, electricity out of these normal sockets around here, same for most European countries, you've got a single power line, and then you've got... Uh, what's often called, the, well, the neutral or some equivalent. So the electricity flows between those two. But effectively, it flows at high voltage through the supply line and it's a much, much lower voltage back through the other one, to put it crudely. And there's a ground as well for many of them. So that's a single phase. And the AC is called because it does alternate, so the voltage and the current go sinusoidally with time. 50 hertz is the repetition rate. And that's what's happening. So the voltage at that socket is going up to a maximum, down through zero, down to the negative maximum, and back up again. And it's doing that 50 times a second. If you have a demand for more power, then to some extent you could increase the voltage. And that's the first thing they do. So instead of 220, 240 volts-ish that we get in Britain, you get the 415-ish volts, 420 volts, that you get from a three-phase supply. And it's a big, heavier connector because you can draw more current as well. And it has three supply lines, and that's why it's called three phases. And what it means is that, I'll just sketch it beneath, if we look at the voltage with time, that's what we see for a single phase, if it's three phase, you have three of those, but they're stepped out, and I won't be able to draw it properly. But you'll see that these are out of step. So it provides, of course, more power because the three lines, and also because it's a higher voltage anyway. But because these are slightly out of step, it makes it easier to operate um, heavy current rotating machinery motors because you can feed these onto different coils on the motor and drive the rotating parts more effectively than if it was just a single input, air conditioning and so on. So when you've got DC fed through an inverter, you've got an AC output, you could feed it to all three phases with a big one like that, but in fact they just fed it onto one because it didn't really matter. On the scheme of the grid, what they were generating was nothing compared with what was available, so it could just be fed onto one. 